Everybody, it's Brett, and welcome back to my show, FMW Stories, for Episode 2, where we're going to be going over the life and times of Tarzan Goto. I wanted to talk about Goto here, as he was a very key figure in the early days of FMW, as he was Onita's right-hand man pretty much the entire time for Onita's FMW. I also want to talk about the reason Tarzan Goto left FMW, which when we did the 1995 History of FMW episode four years ago, it was still not known why he left, and I will go over everything that has come out since in this episode. So Masashi Goto was born on August 16th, 1963 in Shimada City, Shizuoka. There's not really that much information about Goto as a kid, as he's not someone that has really talked about his childhood in detail anywhere, but he was a professional wrestling fan growing up, and he wanted to be a wrestler. But his parents felt like wrestling didn't bring that much honor, and that Goto needed to go into sumo wrestling instead, with Goto listening to his parents. And so after he graduated from junior high school, Goto entered into the coconut no stable. Later, this stable would consist of a future Yokozuna by the name of Hokutumi, as well as former IWGP champion Tadao Yasuda, as they would enlist in this sumo group after T Goto had. However, this stable only would go on for another eight months, as it would end up closing down in November 1979, with Goto's highest ranking being 95th in the second stage. During his sumo time, the group would practice wrestling moves as well, so Goto did gain some experience as his passion still remained in being a pro wrestler. So after the group had closed down in 1980, Goto would try out and make it into All Japan Pro Wrestling, where he would live in the dojo before the likes of Mitsuharu Misawa, Toshiaki Kawada, and Koto Fuyuki, who had came over after the IWE promotion had closed down. Goto would make his debut on February 19, 1981, losing to Shiro Koshinaka, with Goto's main job becoming an assistant for his trainer, Jumbo Suruda. Goto would remain an opening match jobber if he was even booked on the show with his first singles win taking place eight months into his career after defeating Mitsuharu Misawa. The only wins Goto would ever get for years would be against Misawa, Fuyuki, and Kawada as there was no plan for Goto to ever become anything in all Japan. Although in May 1982 that would see the return of Atsushi Onita who had been wrestling in Europe and North America and he had came back to all Japan to become the top junior heavyweight for the promotion with Onita taking a liking to Goto as Onita would work out with his trainer Jumbo Suruta along with the younger wrestlers like Misawa, Kawada, Fuyuki and Goto. Goto would eventually become like a younger brother to Onita, with Onita even letting Goto hold his junior heavyweight title on his shoulder as they took a picture together, as Onita bonded with Goto more than with any of the other younger wrestlers in the dojo. Despite making his debut in 1981 and pretty much remaining an opening match guy for several years, the newly named Tarzan Goto would end up winning the Tokyo Sports Rookie of the Year award for 1983, Although Goto would still remain not getting pushed as his peak would be in 1985 getting a couple second match on the card wins. Eventually All Japan would decide that Goto would need to go on an excursion to the United States in November 1985 with the plan for Goto to come back after a couple years with him having grown and then he would finally get pushed up the card in All Japan. Fellow All Japan wrestler Akio Sato would go along with him as they would first get booked in Kansas City before finding their way to Memphis as they would team and become the Oriental Express with them winning the CWA International Tag Team titles from Jeff Jarrett and Pat Tanaka. Ironically enough, the Oriental Express would end up losing their tag titles to the future Orient Express of Pat Tanaka and Paul Diamond before Goto would end up losing a Loser Leaves Town match in March 1987. 
Goto would soon end up moving to Florida as he had found the love of his life in women's pro wrestler Despina Matanagas, with the two of them getting married and buying a house in Florida. Goto would end up getting booked in Florida somewhat as Ho Chi Win, but it would not be enough to make a living as he would end up having to become a part-time cook at a Chinese restaurant with the thoughts of just quitting wrestling altogether to become a full-time chef as Goto and Despina already had two young boys and Goto in his mind was now an American with no thoughts of ever returning back to Japan for wrestling. But then we get to fall 1989 and Atsushi Onita has already announced the creation of FMW and the first two shows that are going to take place in October 1989 and Onita is talking to one of his acquaintances who goes, you know, Tarzan Goto hasn't been in Japan for a while so he's probably no longer with All Japan and free to join and he would be a perfect number two guy for FMW and I have his number in America if you want to call him and Goto still to this day doesn't know how Onita's acquaintance even had his number but Onita calls Goto at his house in Florida and Onita starts by going Goto do you know who this is and Goto goes uh Jumbo Saruta no it's Onita and I'm starting up a new promotion and I want you to join it with me and Goto ends up going give me a week to decide and in Goto's mind, right away, he thinks, I'm an American full-time. But this new promotion Onita's starting up isn't really going to make it anyway. And I want to have one more match in Japan before going back to America full-time. So Goto calls back Onita and goes, okay, I'm going to agree to wrestle one show of yours before going back to America full-time. But as Goto gets to Japan, he decides... I shouldn't take this job half-heartedly and decides he's going to return to Japan full-time as long as this FMW promotion is around. But by the time Goto arrives to Japan, the very first FMW show in Nagoya is about to take place. So Goto, who wasn't booked to wrestle because it took him a week to decide on what he wanted to do, just ended up watching the show from his seat and then during the main event he would be ringside for the Onita match. Then after the first FMW show, with Goto having decided that he was going to go back full time, he decides that he shouldn't wrestle in FMW before talking to Giant Baba first, since he was still technically an All Japan wrestler. So in between the first and second FMW shows, which were four days apart, so Onita would take Goto to see Giant Baba in person. And Onita and Goto, they're talking with Giant Baba, and Onita says, I gotta use the restroom. So he steps out, and... As Baba and Goto are alone, Baba starts asking Goto about his kids and his family, and he's just starting to tug at Goto's heartstrings by caring enough to ask Goto about his family. Then after that, Giant Baba would say, okay, I'm going to give you permission to leave All Japan, but just know you're really always going to be an All Japan wrestler. And that just makes Tarzan Goto just smile. He's so happy. And Onita comes back from out of the restroom. And he's just puzzled at what's going on. I left and now I'm back. And now both these guys are just smiling at each other quietly. And Goto tells Onita, we're good to go. With Onita being like, all right then. So Goto and Despina would sell their house in Florida and move to Saitama, Japan in November 1989 as Goto is going to live close by the FMW Dojo which is just starting up as he's going to be the full-time trainer where he's going to adapt the All Japan Dojo style which is to make the young boy's life a living hell as Goto not only made sure you knew the basics but he would make sure that you were on a diet while at the same time building up your muscles. FMW, though, at this point is still a really poor promotion, and Despina would actually be the one having to cook curry and other meals for the FMW staff members in the office because they could not afford to go out and eat. FMW at this point also couldn't afford to pay Goto enough for him to be able to buy a Christmas tree in December 1989, which would worry Goto that he got his wife and family to agree to move to Japan with him, and right away, they're not even going to have a Christmas tree for Christmas. But Despina would tell Goto that even though she was born in America, she is now a Japanese woman, and they didn't need a Christmas tree. Throughout 1990, FNW, which had started up as a mixed martial arts promotion, was already beginning to tone down the MMA aspect in favor of death matches, as they would have Goto turn heel on Onita, leading up to the very first no ropes exploding barbed wire death match on August 4th, 1990, in Shiodome, which at the time was such a groundbreaking match with the barbed wire exploding on the wrestlers that it would lead to the match winning the Tokyo Sports Match of the Year for 1990. Afterward, 
afterwards, Goto would end up turning face as newcomer Mr. Pogo would end up coming in and becoming the top heel of FNW as the exploding barbed wire deathmatch really was the first step of FNW getting out of the poverty level and really starting to become a profitable promotion. As FNW would continue to grow, office issues would end up taking place in 1991 that would result in a rival promotion being created called Wing, which would end up having Mr. Pogo leave FNW to join them. That would mean the planned Onita vs. Pogo match, which was going to take place at the very first Kawasaki Stadium show, the biggest FMW show ever, in September 1991, would have to be changed as Goto would end up having to turn heel once again to go up against Onita, this time in an explosive cage match. Onita would defeat Goto once again, and although this show would be another huge financial success for FNW, as it would continue to grow, it would also mean that Goto has now lost to Onita twice on the biggest stage back-to-back -back years, with Goto once again turning babyface after failing to beat Onita after the match. So I don't know if that was really the first crack in the relationship between Onita and Goto, as nothing was said publicly, but a year later, in 1992, the first crack between the two would go public. Shoji Nakamaki, who was a famous baseball writer, wanted to be a pro wrestler and begged Onita to let him join the FMW Dojo. Onita, knowing that Nakamaki would bring publicity since he was a known person, was accepted into the FMW Dojo based on name value alone, but it was agreed that Goto would train him as if he was any rookie and he would start off in the opening matches losing just like everyone else. Well, after a couple months, Nakamaki would go, I'm done with this. I want to retire from wrestling. And FMW would have Nakamaki's retirement match where he would pretty much get squashed by Sabu. Well, after that match, Nakamaki would change his mind and go, I want to come back to pro wrestling. And Goto is like, no, you wanted to retire. You can't just come back. Well, Onita wouldn't listen to Goto and decides to not only bring Nakamaki back, but Nakamaki is going to be Onita's tag team partner for the upcoming 1992 tag team tournament, which would not only piss Goto off personally, but all the other wrestlers would be resentful over the fact that this guy, who was just in the opening matches before, deciding that he was going to retire, and now he's going to be in the main event teaming with Onita every night. Then after that, Nakamaki goes, Well, since my contract technically ended based on me retiring, I now actually am a free agent, and the rival wing promotion just gave me a big offer to be a top wrestler, so I'm going there. And so Nakamaki leaves FNW, and Onita doesn't even say anything negative about the situation, which would make Goto even more angry. Then we fast forward to 1994, and FNW is doing great business, and Onita is making huge money, and Goto is doing pretty well himself at this point. FNW then begins working with Jinichiro Tenru's war promotion, and they have a tag match with Onita and Goto teaming up to defeat Tenru and Asara Hara with Onita pinning Tenru in a match that would win the Tokyo Sports 1994 Match of the Year, winning it over the likes of Mitsuharu Misawa versus Toshiaki Kawada from June 3rd, 1994, and the Great Sasuke versus Chris Benoit from Super J Cup 1994. This would lead to Onita versus Tenru in an explosive cage singles match at Kawasaki Stadium for FMW with Onita having the stipulation that if he loses, he's going to retire, which would help sell out Kawasaki Stadium that day. And they would sell out Kawasaki Stadium and Onita would lose and afterwards go, I'm going to retire, but I'm going to retire one year from today. This would allow FMW to promote a one-year Onita retirement tour to make Onita a lot of money, but the problem is that Onita really is going to leave FMW. So Onita agrees to sell FMW to Shoichi Arai after his retirement, as Arai had been one of the staff members since the beginning of FMW, and was really the only one willing to buy FMW from Onita, knowing Onita wasn't going to be on the shows. And the plan would be that... Tarzan Goto would be the most protective wrestler, but Arai was high on FMW wrestler Hayabusa, who had been in Mexico for the last year, and the promotion was going to be based around Hayabusa, but Goto isn't going to ever lose to Hayabusa unless he wants to, as Hayabusa sees Goto as a roadblock to him truly being the ace of FMW as long as Goto is there. 
So Onita announces his retirement for May 5th, 1995 at Kawasaki Stadium, and they've already sold the stadium out of over 58,000 tickets months in advance, with the plan that Tarzan Goto will once again lose to Onita. Well, Tenru reaches out to Goto as FNW and War are still on friendly terms as Onita had worked a show after losing to Tenru the previous year and calls Goto and goes, Hey Goto, I want to book you for the War Sumo Hall show in March where I'm going to beat you, but Goto's going to make more money off that show and doing that job than he is going to be main eventing Kawasaki Stadium as Onita is going to be one taking so much of the profits that no FNW wrestler really is going to see that big of a pay increase for the show. So Goto accepts Tenru's offer and Onita finds out about this and Onita is pissed. Onita refuses to allow Goto to work this sumo hall show with his reason being FNW is going to be running a house show that day. You can't take a booking from another promotion on the same day that FNW is running a show. Ironically, this house show happened to be like the smallest show that FNW had ran by a lot the entire year of Onita's retirement tour. Voiding Goto from being able to make possibly his biggest payday of the year, which would also piss Goto off. Although the house show reason was the best reason to use, Although the house show excuse was the best thing for Onita to say, the real reason Onita didn't want Goto booked for the Sumo Hall show was Onita didn't want Goto to job to Tenru just a little over a month before Onita was going to beat Goto for their Kawasaki Stadium match as Tenru would end up having to reach out to WWF instead and get Yokozuna booked to job to Tenru instead of Goto. So now Onita and Goto are no longer on speaking terms. Their friendship is over at this point. Then you have the final blow. In April 1995, during a house show, about two weeks before the Kawasaki Stadium show, Onita would notify all the FNW wrestlers of a meeting besides Goto. That, and this meeting would take place with Onita stating that after the May 5th Kawasaki Stadium show, Tarzan Goto will no longer have any duties with FNW besides be a wrestler. Now, this is a bad look for Onita, but it also might have just been that the new owner, Shoichi Arai's decision with him not wanting to have Goto have the power he always had in FMW. But regardless, because Onita and Goto were no longer on speaking terms, and Goto wasn't invited to this meeting where he's losing his extra jobs with the company, the blame falls on Onita regardless. Mr. Ganesuke, a student of Tarzan Goto, becomes super upset over this announcement and the fact that Goto is not at the meeting and goes to Goto right away and tells him everything afterwards. This would lead to a three-hour closed-door meeting between Arai, Goto, and Ganesuke, as well as other FNW staff members. This would lead to Ganesuke in the meeting getting up, being so upset that he would refuse to go to the upcoming Corrigan Hall show and that he was just going to go back to Sayatama and quit wrestling for good. Well, Goto would respond to that by going, well, if you're going to quit, then I'm going to quit too. And Goto, Ganesuke, along with Flying Kid Ichihara would all announce their departure from FNW just two weeks prior to the big Kawasaki Stadium show. Now, just to clear things up, this is Mr. Ganesuke's statement on what happened. Tarzan Goto still states that he will never tell the reason why he left FMW, as he likes that no one knew the reason, and it built up the story to be a big deal because of the mystery. I mentioned in the history of FMW about Goto being offered a gimmick to be Am Shiriko, whose cult had murdered 13 people in the Tokyo subway just about a month before all this happened with Goto. This reason was Arai's guess on why Goto left FMW in his book, but about a year after I told this story on the history of FMW, I read a Mr. Ganesuke quote that when he read that Arai guess, that he laughed out loud at how ridiculous that was, so I knew after that that it was for sure not the real reason. And now Mr. Ganesuke in 2021 gave this story as the real reason why they all left FMW. A Japanese media member did state to me, though, that he thought that maybe Arai had come up with the story for his book because Goto himself, without ever having said it, had underlines doing the gimmick of Am Shonuriko in Big Japan two months after leaving FMW, and Arai took that story and ran with it for his book, but it was not the reason anyone left FMW. 
Goto Ganesuke and Ichihara would all leave FMW and just a week later end up wrestling for IWA Japan, with Ganesuke swearing that IWA Japan did not reach out to them until they had all quit FMW and they all would decide to join IWA Japan with that being a better decision than actually retiring. The three of them would be known as the Real FNW Group, and they would work several promotions including IWA Japan, Big Japan, War, Tokyo Pro, and they were all in agreement to join the brand new FFF promotion, but FFF would end up closing down before holding its first show, and afterwards Mr. Ganesuke and Flying Kid Ichihara would want to go back to FMW, which they would starting in January 1997. I had one FNW wrestler tell me that Goto wanted to come back also, but because all the wrestlers still had bad feelings for him with how strict he was about everything, the wrestlers did not want Goto to come back. That's something I can't confirm though, as Goto has never really seemed like he ever wanted to go back to FMW, as in 1999, Koto Fuyuki wanted to bring Goto back to FMW so that he could lose to Fuyuki, and even though Onita had nothing to do with FMW by this point, he declined the booking. Goto would end up getting his sumo hall match against Tenru in 1997 with Tenru beating Goto, although I don't know if Goto would end up getting paid what he was going to if the match had happened in 1995. Goto would eventually end up working smaller and smaller indies as the years would go by before starting up his own small promotion where they would run shows about once a month at his restaurant, with the most notable thing happening being that him and Mr. Pogo would have a feud that would lead to two different matches, where each Goto and Pogo would end up having to dress up as a maid and serve the customers like waitresses. Goto would also end up working with Onita again for the first time to feud with him for Onita's own promotion in 2001, before Onita and Goto would make up publicly in 2009 and team up for Tarzan Goto's new Super FMW promotion, which would be another small promotion for Goto to run to help get his students booked. Also, and I talked about this in the history of FMW, but the marriage between Tarzan Goto and Despina would end up not working out, and Despina would end up leaving Japan to go back to America in the late 90s. Despina would then reach out to me trying to get Goto on the phone as she had not heard from him in over a decade by that point as she wanted Goto to speak with his sons who he had not spoken with since they had left America. About a year of trying to get in touch with Goto, Despino would finally successfully get in touch with him on the phone to let him know that he was now a five-time grandfather with Goto beginning to cry when finding out the news. At this point, Despina has pretty much moved on from Goto, although his sons can call him whenever they get the chance to talk to their dad on the phone now, at least. Then in December 2016, Goto would marry a woman by the name of Yoshi, after coming to her restaurant so many times that she would eventually ask for him to begin helping out behind the counter for her, and the two working together would end up falling in love with one another. Goto still works at his wife's restaurant in Tokyo to this day, and although he's been cooking going back to his sumo days over 40 years ago, he still doesn't feel like he has anywhere close to the cooking skills that his wife has. The two ended up appearing on a national television newlyweds game show in Japan in 2017, although they would end up failing to win the big prize of a European vacation. Goto's last match came in December 2018 for his Super FMW promotion, as it looks like his wrestling career is pretty much over at this point, as being a cook just seems like something that Tarzan Goto was just always destined to eventually do. So that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you ever want to read up on other FMW wrestlers or the current happening of FMW wrestlers as well as the follow-up promotions, check out my website at bahufmw.com or fmwwrestling.us where you can also buy DVDs or MP4s of pretty much every FMW show in existence among other wrestling promotions in Japan. And if you want to watch these videos on YouTube, just check out Brett FMW. I'll have them all posted there. And if you want to just listen to them on Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, among all the other podcast sites, just search History of FMW and I'll have posted them on there. And that's pretty much it for today, guys. I'll see you next time for Episode 3.